For a while now, I've wanted to make some high power devices in Polybridge 3, but I keep facing one issue. We just don't have any great ways to power them. You can try to use trucks to spin wheels up, but even these can be stalled easily, and they're generally a little unstable. Now in Polybridge 2, we had spring engines, and these could go crazy fast, but they no longer work in the third game. Now a few days ago though, someone reached out to me on Discord with a short video of an engine, and I don't want to give too many details right now, but it looked promising enough that I wanted to see if it could be used to power some sort of walking creature. So of course, the first thing I wanted to try doing was going into the sandbox here and recreating what I saw. Now from the looks of it, what I started out with here was just a basic wheel and you can see I'm constructing that by making a bunch of these steel segments come out from the center. Now importantly, I have to put roads on the outside here and you can see now what I'm doing is putting down some hydraulics going down towards the middle. Now after getting those hydraulics in place, I put down a custom shape on those and you can see See, I'm trying to angle it somewhat to the curvature of the wheel. Now, of course, at first here, nothing really seemed to be happening, but that's because the hydraulics weren't expanding yet. Now, this didn't work exactly as well as I was hoping here, but you can see next, I turned on unbreakable mode, and this is important to get this to work. You'll notice now, as the hydraulics expand, they start to rotate this up 180 degrees and then stop. Now, that's already pretty interesting, but you can see next, I told them to expand a lot less, and now I'm getting consistent rotation out of this. This was already a lot better, and telling the one hydraulic to not expand at all was making it go quite a bit faster. This already looked like a pretty good engine, but I didn't really know how much power it was going to be generating. Now to find that out, you can see I'm taking this, I'm copying it over to the side, and I'm not using a fixed joint anymore. This is going to let it fall right on the ground, and once it does this, you can see here it's able to spin itself up. Now being able to spin itself up on the ground here actually isn't really that big of a load, but it is a pretty good sign at least, and the acceleration it had did lead me to believe it had a good amount of power. Now, if you're wondering why this engine works, to be honest with you, I'm not entirely sure. It definitely has to do something with the custom shape interacting with the roads, but beyond that, unbreakable mode can just be a little glitchy sometimes, and I think it's leading to these funny little results. Now, while I was going on about that, you can see I also tried to expand the shape and add on more hydraulics to get a higher speed. This sort of seemed to work. It wasn't going going incredibly fast, but it did seem to get a little bit of a boost here, and once I was happy with what I saw, next up, I wanted to add on some nodes to the middle here, and try to attach this up to another wheel using a 4 bar linkage. Now to measure how much force it can produce, I wanted to try to use springs here. These of course do take a lot of energy to pull apart, and by using this, I was hoping to see at what point the engine would just stall out. Now this first test here didn't seem to be particularly hard, and you can see now I'm bringing in the spring even closer to the wheel to make it have to pull even harder. This might not look like it, but it takes a tremendous amount of force to spin this around, and the fact that this wheel isn't even stuttering at all means it has a ton of power. Now, one other device I wanted to try making here was a rotation doubler. Now, this is going to do exactly what it sounds like, and its output is going to spin twice as fast as the input. These devices usually take a ton of torque to get working properly, and if I could sustain motion on it, I thought it'd be pretty impressive. Now, I didn't exactly set this up properly here, so it was overextending and breaking, but by adding in another 4 bar linkage here, you can see I wanted to try this out again, and now I had my rotation reverser. This might seem very different than the rotation doubler, but these devices are actually exactly the same, and the only difference is what part of it you end up bracing and what part you let run free. The basic idea is that in the rotation reverser, the chassis is going to be fixed in place, and the output gear is going to rotate in the opposite direction of the input. But if we instead brace the output in place and let the chassis run free, the chassis is going to spin around twice as fast as the input. Now to get this to work, it is a little difficult because the chassis is quite heavy and the fact that it needs to spin around isn't exactly great, but you can see here with just a few steel pieces, I was able to get it to run free and this is close to what I want. Now by just fixing that previous output gear, you can see now that I extended out the motion here so that the chassis is rotating twice as fast as the input. Now I got a little carry away on this, and I ended up optimizing it quite a bit here, and you can see I get the second wheel to spin nearly as fast as the first one. Now, I realize here I'm getting very sidetracked, but I wanted to 
try and make a larger wheel and see just how fast it could get to the end of the map. Now to make this, you see I made a bunch of spokes coming out from the center here and trying this out now, it makes this funny little pattern here, but otherwise I just need to brace this all together to get it to fall down properly. Now those connections all made here, you can see trying it out now, it does have the torque to spin this up, but it does take quite a while to get up the speed. Now I was actually glad I did this test because it told me that while this thing has a ton of energy, it is an infant. I do have to at least be a little careful because it will stall out eventually. The amount of force it would take though to stop this would be pretty tremendous, so even with this, I have a pretty high ceiling for where I can go. Now, one thing that's gonna matter a lot once I wanna start to power a mech is how fast I can make it go. For this, I wanted to build up a simple car and just see what the top speed of this would be. Now, I still look here, it wasn't too bad at all, and while it looks a little slow, if I compare this to a max speed limo, it's about half the speed of that. That was good information to have, and just because I felt like it, I added on a block on top of this car, and I wanted to see how it would do under load. Now, starting out with a 20 polygram load, it seemed to be going pretty much exactly as fast as before, and that was what I was looking to see. Now, even with maxing out the weight of the custom shape to 500 polygrams, it still was able to spin up, even though the entire chassis broke. This thing clearly had a ton of power here, and after seeing this, I thought it was time to try to make the legs for my walker. Now, I was going into this with pretty much no plan at all, and starting out, I wanted to see if I could just link up a couple of arms to the wheel. Now by doing this, you see I get this reciprocating motion, and this is at least a good start, maybe for the top part of the leg. The only issue I saw though, was that it wasn't exactly in the right orientation, so to solve that, I used a couple of steel pieces and made this triangle, and you can see now, it gets something that's a little bit closer to a leg. Now to drive the bottom part of the leg, so it actually picks up off the ground, you can see I changed out the triangle, and I'm using a parallelogram instead. Now it's a little loose at the moment, but you can see now, Next, I'm going to be able to attach up the other part of this parallelogram to another part of the wheel, and this should create some interesting movement. Now, unfortunately, it was binding up on itself a little bit here, and that's probably what happens when I decide to do no math at all and just try to wing it. So next, I went back and did a little redesign. I didn't want to do anything crazy, but you can see here my attachment arms are a lot longer now, and this should play a lot better with the wheel. Now, for the bottom part of the leg, you can see I used another diamond piece of steel, and I attached it all up again with a few more pieces of steel. Now I thought this looked a lot better, but unfortunately it was extremely flimsy at the moment and it was bending apart quite badly, so instead I went back to the parallelogram design that I was using before. After that, you can see here I'm using more steel pieces and attaching up a little bit above the first piece that I was using. Now for once, this thing wasn't bending apart and I could see here the movement was at least close to what I wanted. You can clearly see the leg pick up before it pushes back down to the start of the cycle. Now using thicker pieces of steel, it bends a lot less, and this whole thing already looks a lot better. This was pretty close to what I was looking for, and this probably already would work as a leg, but with a few modifications, I got it to pick up a lot further here, and I thought that this was looking a lot better. At full speed, it's clearly a little bit spazzy, but I thought with a little bit of tuning, I could probably get it to look better. One thing though, is that it still just doesn't really look that much like a human leg, and I'm attaching up the bottom connection joint a lot higher. This of course makes the whole thing a lot more compact, and you can see already it's looking quite a bit more realistic. Now I extended out the leg a bit further, and you can see next I added on a foot. This was making it look significantly better, and already I thought this would probably work to move me around on the ground. Now of course though, I am missing one important thing. That's the second leg, and one issue is that I actually can't just copy paste it, because I need it to be 180 degrees out of phase with the first one, so that once the first one lifts up, the second one is stepping down. To do this, you can see here I'm copying it over to the side, and next I'm deleting off a lot of the linkage arms, and I'm attaching them up to the bottom of the wheel. Now fortunately, nothing was overlapping, and trying this out now, it seemed to work pretty well. Now funnily enough, the legs aren't actually exactly 180 degrees out of phase, so you'll notice there's a bit of a gallop to it, but I was actually hoping this might help it run across the ground a bit easier. Now I extended out the ground all the way to the end, 
happened, and after that, I used a bunch more steel pieces to link all of the fixed joints together. Now this thing doesn't currently have any custom shapes in it, so you'll notice it's not able to drive itself around, but it's at least sort of holding itself together, and copying over that shape now, I wanted to see how it would do. Now starting out, it was able to run a little bit, but eventually it ended up just completely falling over and rolling around on its head. So next, you can see what I did is made the feet even bigger, and this should help with stability. The problem though is it's still badly unbalanced, and to fix that, I added on some roads further back to pull it backward. Now this let it take, in my opinion, its first full step, but it still just wasn't that great, it ended up falling on its back. So next, I added on more pieces of steel to the feet. The issue though is it still ended up jumping into the air and rotating that way anyway. Now deleting off some roads, I fine-tuned the weight to let it take quite a few steps here, but I didn't like that it wasn't very well balanced and eventually was just falling over anyway. Now I was thinking maybe larger feet would help out, and you can see I'm adding on more steel to the back. It didn't look great though, and it's moving around so much weight now, the entire mechanism would bind up. Now with a lot more random tuning, you could see here I was able to go across the ground relatively well, but it ended up still falling down, and I really would have liked a system that automatically could balance itself. To do that, I was thinking of adding in a custom shape, and you can see I'm connecting it up to the main chassis, and I wanted to set its weight to be relatively high. This I was hoping would create a nice anchor point so the whole mechanism wouldn't fall apart on me, and this at least seemed to help a little bit. It would always eventually still end up falling down though, and it seemed like no matter what I was doing, it always was a problem. Eventually, I got the idea of moving the custom shape way further down of the machine. Now this of course is going to make the center of gravity a lot closer to the ground, which should make it a lot harder for the device to fall. Now I could see already without tuning it, it was performing a lot better, and with just a few adjustments here, I was able to get this thing to go almost to the end of the map. This of course was a massive improvement over everything else I saw, and after adding on a head to this device, the next thing I wanted to do is move the center of mass even further down by putting custom shapes in the feet. Now, in addition to moving the mass all the way down there, I was hoping with heavier feet, I'd be able to be much better planted on the ground. This, though, just gave me a lot of the same issues that I saw way earlier on, and having that much weight concentrated in the feet causes the mechanism to bend badly and ends up breaking. Now, it's getting kind of desperate next, so I thought maybe I adding in some springs could dampen the load on the legs and help things out a little bit. This didn't really seem to do anything and also looked horrible, but I thought at this point maybe if I added back in my custom shape and put it way further to the ground than I had ever done before, it might actually give me that self-stabilizing effect. Trying this out, the guy looked a little unstable, but every time he bent backward or forward, he would end up returning back to center, and once I saw this, I knew I finally had something that was actually stably walking. Now I moved it over to the entrance, and you can see here it doesn't come off ledges very well, but it was a very minor effect, and the next thing I wanted to add in was some arms to grab onto a truck. Now I usually like to make cute little levels based around the things that I make, and for this I wanted to try to deliver a truck from the beginning all the way to the end of the map. For whatever reason though, I just really hated the way the arms were looking, and it took me a long time to finally make something I thought at least looked decent. Now with that, I added an excavator here, and you can see below that, I added in a platform. Now of course, I stacked these all the way down to the bottom, and you can see here, it's able to sit just fine. As a nice little bonus too, raising up this one little piece of terrain also let the device actually start to jump down and start to walk forward. Now to grab onto this thing, you can see I'm using a couple of road pieces, and once I got these around the excavator, I also added in a hydraulic to latch on. Onto it. Now at first it was a little loose and you can see it just slipped straight off, but moving the excavator further back it did get a grip on it. It was a little too strong though and ended up popping off a wheel, so just lowering the amount the hydraulic was contracting seemed to solve the problem and with this I had a good grip. I was having a little bit of trouble coming off the platform though and once I finally did I was leaning too far back and ended up falling down. Lowering the platform the truck was on seemed to solve the problem and with this you can see here, I'm taking my first few good steps. These feet don't really have great traction with the grounds, but I almost feel like that helps them out a bit, because if they got too much bite, it might actually be an issue. Now to get a few more good steps, you can see I made this nice descending slope here, and with this, I was 
finally able to get off with the truck and start walking to the other side. Now with this, I felt pretty good, so the next thing I wanted to do is add on a ramp and see if I'd be able to walk up it. This would be quite the challenge, because it's a relatively steep slope, but the amount of power this engine produces is really good, and you can see I got all the way up to the top. I had a few issues with the slope at the end here, but I figured if I ended off with this, I might be in better shape. Now I also went ahead and you can see I made this whole thing a lot longer, and now I'm making that ramp where it has to jump over this little river. Now attempt one here really wasn't too bad at all, and with just a few minor adjustments, I was able to stay pretty stable, and you can see now I'm delivering the car over to the end. And to finish this all off, I just moved the checkpoint flag to the middle platform, and with this, you can see here, I'm able to walk over to it and get my level completion. So if you guys have any more ideas for what I should try to make using this engine, make sure to leave them down below. I was already thinking of using them to make some sort of land speed record car, and using that rotation doubler I had before, I might be able to do it. But make sure to like the video if you liked the build. Make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss more Polybridge 3 content, and otherwise, till next time.